Heat. Heat. Tough on men. Hard on everything in the world. Heat is hard on engines. That's why every car has a cooling system. Did you ever wonder where the water goes in the cooling system of your automobile? The water goes down through the radiator, then to the water pump, which forces it on. Then it enters the engine. Once in the engine, this river of water flows first through the jackets around the cylinders, uniformly cooling the six-cylinder walls. Next, the stream goes up into the cylinder head, where its direction is so controlled as to drive it against the valve seats. Leaving the valve seats, it circulates through the head, and after it has done all the cooling it can do, the water comes out through the hose at the top and flows back into the radiator. Even though Emily Post may never approve it as good etiquette, the well-known business of cooling coffee in a saucer is an excellent illustration of what happens in the radiator of your car. In the saucer, the hot coffee is spread out thin over a large area so that the heat has a chance to escape. Cold is only the absence of heat, and heat doesn't just disappear. It has to be carried away through the air. Now, if you blow on the coffee, <laughs> that helps a lot. Even more heat is carried away by the greater circulation of air. That's why large surfaces help heat to escape fast. More liquid is exposed to the air. More heat is carried away. Now let's put a cover on the saucer. Stand it up on end. Run tubes through it like this. Put a fan over here. And what have we? A radiator, a big surface, plus air circulation. That's what carries away the heat from the water in the radiator of your car. As you can see by the smoke, air is pulled quickly over all the surfaces of the radiator by the action of the fan, which also circulates air around the engine. As the engine gets up speed, we get additional help in cooling. Air is forced more rapidly through the radiator. After a certain speed is reached, we could do without the fan. But inside the engine is where the water does its work. The temperature inside an automobile engine is just as important to the engine as the temperature of a room is to people. In an air-conditioned room, the temperature is ideal for human beings, pretty close to 70 degrees. But in another room, the thermometer is up to 90 degrees, and nobody likes it. It's too hot for comfort. But even a temperature that seems hot to us would be cold to the engine of an automobile. The temperature an automobile engine likes best isn't 70 degrees, nor 90, nor even 100. A gasoline engine likes 180 degrees best, summer or winter. And that's just the way the water is when it leaves the engine. Each part inside the engine has a particular temperature at which it operates best. In the water jacket, close to the cylinder wall, it's 212 degrees, just hot enough to boil water. Between the piston and cylinder wall, the temperature is about 350. And inside the metal, in the top of the piston, it's about 600 degrees, hot enough to boil mercury. Up in the combustion chamber, where the gasoline burns, the temperature is about 3,000 degrees, and that's hot enough to melt steel, and then some. That whole working gang inside the engine has to have just the right amount of water in order to keep operating at just the right temperatures, neither too hot nor too cold. What would happen if they didn't get that water? Well, we all know what happens to metal when it gets hot. When steel gets hot, it expands. That's why there is a gap between rails in a railroad track. The gap protects the rails from buckling when they get hot and expand. Foundries use the same principle in making locomotive wheels. The flange is heated until it expands. Then it is slipped over the wheel so that when it cools, the flange will contract again and fit tightly over the wheel. 
The metal inside an automobile engine also expands when it gets hot. And if all the water suddenly boiled away, every part in the engine would overexpand. Then nothing could move, and the engine would almost melt. It would be ruined. That's why it's important to keep your radiator always full. The valves which let the fuel in and let the hot burn gases out are at the hot spot in the engine. They must have a special water spray. They're not content with just ordinary cooling. The valve is being cooled all the time it is on its seat. So the cooler the seat, the cooler the valve. To make sure the seats are cool, water is squirted directly on the valve seat. The cooler the seat and valve, the harder they are and the longer they will last. This kind of cooling keeps valves working efficiently and gives them a long and useful life. In the modern car, all the parts inside the engine get treated to a new kind of cooling. These water jackets run the full length of the cylinder, assuring uniform cooling over the full length of the cylinder wall. This also means that pistons are kept cooler as they are always running against these cooler cylinder walls. Piston rings and pistons, properly cooled, keep in contact with the oil film on the cylinder walls. Oil temperature is kept down. Cylinder bores remain truly round and straight. All parts run cooler. Now, here's a test that shows what the cooling system of the modern car can really do under extreme load and temperature conditions on a steep mountain grade. We're at the bottom of one of the longest, toughest hills in the country, the Nine Mile Hill between Clarkdale and Jerome, Arizona. A real test of any automobile's cooling system. One last check on that temperature gauge, and the test is on. A modern automobile pulling a double load against a Nine Mile Hill under a temperature of 110 degrees in the shade. It's 180 degrees, and we have a modern cooling system that doesn't have to ask odds of any condition anywhere, anytime. It can always keep cool so long as the water boy comes around.